so many critics, these pundits. Generally speaking, I'd be a fan of off the ball. Exactly. And like Tommy knows his football, obviously, listening to football at the odd time. And I was looking at the power rankings and I thought that Jesus almost still be feeling the effects of these mushrooms. But they just dismiss you like, you, you know, you have nothing to do with the bloody occasion. Eight minutes past eight on this Tuesday morning, though, to BM. It is Tommy Rooney's power rankings. Tommy Rooney, come in. Morning, Shane. Morning, Johnny. Have you wiped away your tears listening to, to Owen Sheehan live, live there for the first time since he's left us? I mean, it was quite emotional for us. How did you feel about it? No tears, no emotion, but there's no surprise that his first appearance of the year came after that Tyrone performance on Saturday. The heat is on. Um, a couple of people are in touch after Monaghan's fantastic win on penalties against Armagh saying that they'd made a mockery of the power rankings that was just untrue um, you made a mistake there at the start Shane you declared them as my power rankings Tommy Rooney's power rankings they are in fact the official the only real Gaelic football power rankings Ooh. there's no ownership of them they just are what they are it is what it is okay um, yeah because I know you've been getting a lot of uh, getting a lot of hate and uh, look Owen had to deal hey, with that hate hey, for hey. a long time I wouldn't say it's hate no, not here. Disagreement, uh, potential. Um, people are very blind bias. Yeah, blind bias. People are very point. protective of their counties. I think is something you, you'd have been aware of before, but I think you'll be more aware of now. Look, where are Mead? Seventeenth. <laughs> Seventeenth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. He's very defiant there. He's just like he's like listening to Owen Sheehan has just um, turned him into like a fairly belligerent, abrasive Tommy Rooney. That's what happens when you, when you take the power rankings over. I think it, it, the personality change happens slowly, but then it mm. clicks into gear. Like a dictator, like starts it, off kind of well and just becomes. A, I look at. There we go. Who produced Who produced the power rankings for for five years before I presented them? Oh, there you we know. go. Tommy it wasn't himself. Tommy, was it? It was Tommy. Oh, it was Tommy. Tommy's been Tommy's been the he's been the shepherd behind all of this. So like he's been the one whispering in Owen's ear to say say that say that say this. Do you know? So technically, it's been Tommy Rooney's power rankings for for quite some time. We just did not no. didn't know it. No, no, no. It's the official Gaelic football power rankings. The official Gaelic football power rankings. We'll get into it, Tommy. The first two pages. I mean, we can probably rifle through them. I don't even know if we need to, but uh, no. unchanged, obviously. As you were, yeah. The the one of note again once more is Mead in seventeenth, down in sixteenth. I think on form maybe they deserve to be a little higher, just on reflection, a couple of counties there that finished off the end of the round robin series obviously had difficult years, but uh, they're two different competitions and I think whoever wins the Talchin Cup will end up being the sixteenth best team in the country, and that's just where it's gonna be at. Down ahead of it at this stage. Moving on. Um and our movement Monaghan last week held on to the ninth position, but Cork have slid back to ninth this week. They were look at they were unlucky at the weekend. I do think Cork are rising. I think they're coming, um, and I think ninth is a fair reflection of where they finished. They finished middle of the road in Division Two. They lost to Clare and Munster, and then then the work that Kevin Walsh and John Cleary had started last year, the work that Kevin Walsh has brought um, since he came to the board this year, started to come to fruition. I give you a good stat from the weekend came from the Irish Examiner 33 shots Cork took at the weekend sorry 33 attacks 22 shots 9 scores mm, not good enough barely paltry not a good return they had no they had no real left footed shooter um, James Dunhu said at the weekend and he's been it's James Dunhu's Cork mm. whatever you say about Tommy Ernie's power rankings it's James Dunhu's Cork if they had a kit hook he reckons they would have beaten Derry at the weekend so um, now look at Shane McGuigan missed that penalty he had a poor day in front of the posts um, Conor Doherty scored that brilliant goal and then kind of went a bit loose with the shooting afterwards as well so Derry left a lot behind them too but look at Cork have got the athleticism and they're on the rise um, I think ninth is a fair summation of where I, they're at I'm basing Tommy a bit on the game on the, just the weekend games but like I, I think Kerry are going to open up Derry handy enough um, I think I think what we saw with Derry yeah look at it after the weekend it, it's probably a fair fair thing to say Johnny yeah but I just think that Derry are going to cause Kerry a lot more issues than Tyrone did Um Tyrone wilted at the weekend and like there has been a am I going to say backbone issue in Tyrone there has probably has been like the, the consistency hasn't been there in Tyrone and like people are saying Kerry out Tyrone them like Kerry set the terms of engagement on Saturday they were the aggressors like 
Paddy Clifford and Myler, like Myler gave Paddy as good as he got and they both sent off at the end. But like Paddy won that battle this time. Like mm. the last time Myler shaded an epic battle. Paddy had a really big influence throughout the game. Sorry. But Myler in extra time obviously um had a couple of big plays as well. And Myler won that day, they won the All Ireland. Kerry were the aggressors the last day. Like Darren McCurry really didn't get on it. The two Canavans had two moments apiece really the two great scores apiece but like they couldn't get into the game uh, Kilpatrick and Kennedy had had an awesome years they were bullied by O'Connor and Barry um, Adrian Splann had a big game like Kerry did the the bullying that day and I don't think Derry would wilt as much um, I also am not sure Derry have the panel still to, to get past the team like Kerry in the form that they showed us the last day so um, yeah I think it's going to be a lot tighter uh, I think defensively they'll probably cause Kerry some issues but like Marco Shea said to us a good while ago on the football pod he said he's always worried about a player who has an off day mm-hmm. um, when he's marking them the next day because great players don't have bad days twice and I'm not saying David Clifford had a bad day because he had that remarkable moment but he was one from nine from his shots from play in Crow Park last Saturday mm. um, so I'd be expecting Shea McGuigan It'll be, there'll be a lot of pressure on and David Clifford they both have good games the next day yeah you'd imagine so and, and, that's and if Clifford has a good game you know yeah Kerry, you're probably gonna it's win. hard to see Kerry doing it. and the, the, the point about Derry's strength and depth or lack thereof compared to teams like Kerry in Dublin is probably a fair one like they've been they've been excellent this year again Derry to retain an Ulster title is not an easy thing to do um, but as John Cleary the Cork manager said after the game at the weekend like Cork's middle eight is quite getting on in years and, and it just kind of suited Derry and the game petered out maybe uh, kind of you even just saw like the Rory Maguire goal just before the Darty goal I mean Cork scored the goal all of a sudden they're back in the game but then they kind of not lose the heads but didn't exactly get back in position and let Derry in for that goal I felt very very easily maybe yeah yeah and we kind of saw that on a couple of occasions at the weekend like we saw and I think do you know what could have played a factor there it could have been the 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 week on week on week the three games in a row that some of the preliminary winners have played like when they didn't top their group and we've learned that and it's a new calendar this year and we definitely didn't see Cork apply the same press that they did to the Squeezers Common or to beat Mayo so they were definitely lacking energy but like we saw it a couple times the weekend like it was funny Emphis Morris in the Dublin um, Mayo game he he's raving about Mayo kicking the ball and 45 seconds later he's like look what happens when you kick the ball and as he's saying it Davy Byrne throws his left boot at that ball and it drops into Collie Beskell's hands Reen O'Neill kicks that wonder score and Crow Park goes nuts I actually think Ethan Rafferty nailing him with that that kind of punch to the chest showed that maybe Armas switched off for a few seconds mm-hmm. and they allowed Monaghan to get that one last chance and somehow somehow it was criminal how Conor McManus <laughs> Conor McManus was allowed to see the ball yeah. like this is inter-county football this is the All-Ireland quarter-final like it's not nice to say it but like Conor McManus should have been kept out of the game like mm. there's no way Manzi should have got his hands on the ball there there was no hope in hell that the Dublin team of 2017 would have allowed that kick out to get out like do you remember the scene where Mayo had brought it back to a point and David Clark has the ball and they're, they're trying or Dublin had just taken the lead to go point up David Clark puts the ball in the tee and four Dublin players drag down four Mayo players there could have been more but that's all we could see on TV actually the referee didn't know who to black card he didn't know who to book it was pure chaos and Clark's kick out I think goes over the sideline and like we saw it at the weekend Cork scored that goal 54 seconds later Conor Doherty steps inside dummies bang back of the net for 54 seconds Cork had a chance gone Armagh were in the All-Ireland semi-finals again for 20 seconds they couldn't stop an attack Monaghan got it and Mayo on top in great form Dublin killed them 20 seconds later so I think what we saw there was the culmination of the fact that some teams that are at this stage aren't the finished package yet because that's just not good enough at junior club level never matter senior into county level to concede a score like that immediately after going on the, on, yeah. the fo- on the front foot you need ruthlessness you need dark arts and no, I guess we can't accuse Armagh of not uh, engaging in the dark arts over the last number of years but yeah that, that little those little moments of being ice cool in the head like Conor McManus was or like Monaghan generally were in the last play Armagh maybe need a little bit of that and we've seen that they haven't got to a semi-final in so long like oh I, like 
I think our man, the clutch moments too, Shane, have been unbelievable. Like, look at Reen O'Neill. Like, talk, talk about yeah, the clutch last player. year against Galway, the, yeah. The free against Galway. Like, the point from play. I like, that was, do you remember Kenny O'Connor's equaliser in, in the, was it the 16 final? Yeah. Where, where Aiden kind of slips it to him and he's 50 yards out and he steps one way and he steps the other way and he puts it just about over the bar. Mm. Like, Reen's point was absolutely awesome. But, like, McManus like I don't think Armagh's problem is in the clutch moment I think Armagh's problem was early on in the game they didn't bury Monaghan they had their chances early on they didn't take them they kept they kept the game as a score for score game they didn't put the foot in the throat Armagh played a little bit of fear and uh, it's hard to blame them they've come so close the, the lines are so fine but they allowed Monaghan to set the terms of engagement just like Roscommon did against Mayo and Connacht a couple of months ago they allowed Monaghan to set the terms of engagement and once they did that they were in bother well Tommy you've, you, you've brought up Monaghan I'm, I have to say I'm extremely nervous because infamously in, a, in an eight horse race with only eight teams left in the All-Ireland Championship Monaghan were ninth well, in last week's well, power rankings sorry <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous because I'm, I'm, I'm a, I, like, I haven't looked at it I, 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 I know that there are only four four teams left at this stage of the championship but where do you want Monaghan to be? So you, you, well, you've you've drawn against Armagh, who I, I think um, are, are probably lucky to be in the position we've, that they've got. Yeah, to you've our, drawn against Armagh, who are probably the better team over the. But over Galway the drew with Armagh last year in the quarter final, and, and Galway were much the better team. Yeah, like yeah. Gal, Galway's Galway's position in the power, power rankings is far far uh, more of an indictment of the power rankings than Monaghan's. Let's be honest. <laughs> well, 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 let's look. We're we're not, do you want to get it? Sorry, don't, go on, Tom. We won't go. We won't go to the final pitch. Don't go there yet, Johnny. That's probably a fair point. That's a Thanks, fair point Tommy. from Johnny. Before we get there, so it sounds to me like you've seen the power rankings. Shane, I want to know where you think Monaghan should be. And bear in mind, as Johnny said, Vinnie Corey said at the weekend, we didn't win that match. We won a penalty shootout. Exactly. Yeah, but the, but you do whatever it takes to get over the line in, in an All-Ireland quarter final. And I'm by the way, penalty for a skill as well. I've made this point yesterday. But it's nothing to do with the power rankings. Like they, it's they, nothing to they, do with that. They were inferior I, against Armagh over the course of the game and you think they should be in the top four. I, no, I think if, if it, the top four this this year at this current state, I think if if, Mo, if uh, Monaghan qualify for an All-Ireland quarter final and they're ninth in the power rankings and then if they qualify for a semi-final and they're not in the top four, you're asking me where I think they should be. That answers your question. Okay. Then oh, I think it makes a mockery. One question for you. 2020, where would you have put Tip and Calvin in the power rankings? Exactly. Well, you see, that that was different because... Blah, 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 no, 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 blah, 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 let, let me explain. Blah, blah. So, Tip, no, 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 that was a COVID different. year. There was, there was a, a, You went straight from the provincial straight through to the semi-final. Monaghan this year have, have had a chance to play other teams in different groups. They drew with Derry in their group in Derry with 14 men for a large portion of that game they, they beat Clare with 123 scoreline and, and did really well they beat Kildare they, they beat Kildare away from home and again that a lot of people were right neutral off venue in. neutral venue but uh, Kildare got to choose that venue and then they got past our man in the quarter final by hook or by crook by experience by Carl O'Connell Connor McCarthy all these lads who are guaranteed all-stars in my book so it's totally different to Tipper and Cavan in 2020 in my view they've, they've had more games they've had more no, opportunities I, I to show I didn't ask you to they beat Tyrone and Oma as well I asked you where do you think Cavan and Tip should have been in 2020? Well, that year, not in the top four. Not in the top four, in my, in, probably in my view. I, I don't, I don't, I don't think getting to the semi-finals guarantees a top four in the power rankings. But the nature of the year as a whole, I think, and and Monaghan's year as a whole this year has been that's been unbelievable. Pretty good. They've been an unbelievable clutch team, 100, percent and they've been absolutely remarkable. And I actually feel I've been too soft where I put them now. Okay, well, Monaghan, we're about to, Monaghan, we're about to get fifth. Into it. They're fifth. Yeah, yeah show, us the top. show us the top. And I actually think, I actually think. This is absolute madness. Like I've been soft here. I actually feel like I've messed up. Yeah, monitor fifth. Go, like, do you know what? Just, no, sorry, do you just know what? up the screen again, there, lads. Sorry, Galway are like this. Uh, okay, it's not an exact science, but Galway. Where do you expect them to be? Fifth, they should be. They're looking to be in the top eight. Galway are behind Derry, Monaghan, and Armagh, even though they're better than all three, and probably Mayo well, as well. But then again, we haven't had that. We haven't had a great year. Yeah, Johnny, look, I think Park Joyce would say it himself. Yeah, like, he did. You know, like that, that's that's really, and you're looking at that, and you're looking at Galway, and you're looking at Armagh. I couldn't put Monaghan behind Armagh. Do you, do you actually yeah. think Monaghan should be in the top four here? Like, Monaghan are pound for pound lucky to be in the top six or seven. They've qualified for another All Ireland team. They, they drew against Armagh, who are nowhere near, they're not asses roar of All Ireland cha- cha- challengers. Like. They got past. How can you not be an All Ireland challenger when you're in the last Armagh, four, Armagh, Armagh, Armagh win wouldn't, wouldn't wipe the floor with Kerry or Dublin at the moment. They would not wipe the floor with them. They're nowhere near them. Armagh like. beat Galway the week before Monaghan drew with them and beat them on penalties. Yeah, that was a mess for game. Galway didn't play well. But Armagh are not All Ireland contenders. Like. And Monaghan. Armagh, would, Armagh wouldn't be in the top four if they'd won on penalties at the weekend. Exactly. 
if, Mar- if Armagh had beaten Monaghan by seven or eight points, Armagh would be in the top four. But like, th- this is the way. This is the way it, it, it falls, Shane. Like, topping the group is so important, and it's shown what the makeup of this has been. Galway and Mayo messed up on the last day of the year. If Galway had held on against Armagh, if Aidan O'Shea had even put that ball over the bar against Cork and they ended up second in the group, I think we'd be looking at a very different All Ireland semi final at the minute. Like I think Kerry could have been on a little bit of bother if they'd finished second and had to play a preliminary round quarter final. But Kerry have their rhythm now. They had their two week break. They now have two weeks to the semi final. They're after putting in that savage performance against Tyrone. Kerry couldn't be in a better place. And the dubs, like I think the real debate here is whether Dublin should be number one. And that's the thing I really struggled with this week. Should Dublin be number one? Because that second half performance was frightening. As a Mead person, I I nearly cried like. It was just their bloody back. And they had not shown anything like that since I would argue 2019. Like, your, none of it in 2020, none of it in 21. Not even against Kerry, like when they when they put up that challenge. Against Kerry, it felt like one last sting of a dying wasp. Yeah. Well, Jesus Christ, the it, giant was back. It's desperately hard to call who which is the best team. But in, Tommy, in Tommy's defence, he, you had Kerry, you had Kerry at number one, and mm. you know if if you'd moved Kerry down to number two after them beating Tyrone in the, in the manner in which they did, but, it would have been a farce as well. So mm. I, I'm not sure it would have been a farce, Shane. Like I can't really control what happens with the power rankings. It, they just kind of they just kind of come to me, you know. It happens and like you know, Monaghan being where they're at, like there's obviously a streak in Galway where they haven't got over the line they've won their provincial scram they finished second in the league fine but like it was in Galway's hands this year and they had done so much right and they had been in first place in the power rankings and they just threw it away and it's the same thing with Armagh Armagh have been three penalty shootouts away from winning the Ulster title and being in two back-to-back All-Ireland semi-finals. <laughs> it's such fine lines, but that is sport. It's Gaelic football. It's top-level elite sport. That's why we love it. It's going to be so worth it for whoever does it because the, the margins are that tight. And Monaghan being in fifth place, fully deserved. They're in a All-Ireland minor final this weekend against Derry. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vinnie Corey, like... What an exceptional job he's done. Even the manner in which he's used this panel this year. Like, I was looking at the Monaghan team chain at the weekend. Like, was there only three recognised proper out and out forwards starting in Jack McCarran, Stevie O'Hanlon, Conor McCarthy at wing back? Like, Gary Moan, I'd argue, is a, is a bloody middle third player. Yeah. He's nearly taken on the mantle of being a sow, like Darren Hughes has done for so many years. A sow of a man. And, like, I'm looking at the rest of the team there. You've got uh, McCarran, obviously, in the corner. You've got O'Hanlon at 10. Uh, Michal Bannigan is another forward. Yeah. So really, they started with three forwards and McCarthy then a wing back. So like four out and out forwards. McManus, how they've used them, comes off the bench, kicks his four points. They've protected him all year long. They've used him exceptionally well. Like, what a job he's done. But like, Monaghan won that game at the weekend with a 46%, I think, conversion rate. Yeah, the wide, the wide card was, was a concern and that's why I, th- I thought it was going to go south for Monaghan at one and, point. Uh, how many all did you give out? Because... Doesn't well, work like that. Buddy. I know, of course, yeah, and I think getting to a semi final maybe only guarantees you possibly two, maybe three if you're doing very well. So if it's doesn't two, guarantee if, anything. If it well it doesn't guarantee anything. Conor McCarthy's one I think is guaranteed. Um based on all of his performances this year. It's been consistency, one two from wing back one against Clare, one two from wing back uh against Kildare as well, and then yeah. three points at the weekend. Like he's clutch and, and these scores are outrageous as well. Um, yeah. Two twelve from play in the championship this year. I think he's in the top six or seven scorers from play in the championship. Right. McCarthy's been a revelation and I 100% will back it if McCarthy puts in a good performance mm-hmm. next time against Dublin 100% he's it right in the mix but like there is absolutely no guarantees at this stage of the competition especially when we've had so many matches this year I think it's going to be even out a bit more I might give McCarthy a better shout Tommy does, um, does the league become a bit of a bit of an irrelevance now like when you look at Galway and Mayo this year it's like what was the point in any of this like I mean fair enough you can still like go through the back door but also just win your province or come second in your province and then the league it, it might be this thing for teams that are kind of looking for a league position to get into the that 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 section of the tournament but like what was the point in any of this when, Gal- when like Dublin were sort of going through the motion in Division 2 and Kerry were like bang average up until essentially that Kerry were going through the motions until last weekend you're like this is just a phony war up until now for Dublin and Kerry who are suddenly just look miles better than everyone else even though they haven't all year yeah there was there was an element to that and um, what was the phrase you used there that they, they was you didn't use shadow boxing you used something else phony, phony war, war yeah yeah like th- there's like I'd love to know the the sports scientists behind this all because they've obviously timed it to absolute perfection when you look at Mayo's strong start to the league right and McStay was obviously in 
with his management team. They'd lost Mullen and Keegan. They'd draw to Galway. They'd draw to Armagh. I think they put in another two good wins. I think they went down and carried the next day or something like that. And a lot of people are looking now saying like, why didn't he mix it up a little bit more or, or change up the panel or, you know, mix up who he was going with. Like McStay felt like, this is important now, we'll go for the win in the league. And I think it was a big thing for Mayo to win a bit of national silverware for all the younger players and the, the newer players, you say, coming through. Um, Galway kind of ended up there by default. I think the Rossies were in a really good position for a long time. Uh, Derry and Dublin couldn't help it. They were in Division 2, but, you know, they were able to time their run to a certain extent I would say that it is probably is like the league has been important at different times. Like we've over the years, like Derry were a great league team and couldn't switch it on in championship back around 12, 13, 14. Um, there's been different times where different league titles have been important. I think Kerry won one in, in 17 and that felt massive for that Kerry team. They bet Dublin in the final. Dean Rock missed a late free, hit the post. Um, and I think it was the first match Brian Fenton had ever lost actually as a Dublin footballer. Um, Mayo winning one in 19 felt like a big thing for that team there's different years where the league means more and I think next year the league is going to mean less than it ever has done mm. because teams are going to look at this year and go what can we learn from last year I don't think the provincials will matter as much I think just getting a, a good we have to A team. get into the groups and then B try to win the group basically that's exactly. it exactly that's it win the group that's the key because they get your two week two week two week that's the run you want to the All-Ireland um, and I think that's totally fair to Danny I think teams are going to treat it slightly differently next year I don't necessarily think that's going to be a bad thing I think we're going to be mad for football when it comes back in February um, I think eventually there might be a tweak to the system where we'll get an exciting provincial championship played in February, March the league kicking off then and then we're into a round robin after that uh, a, fi- it, a fine it, one for it, me it, sorry it, I know we're running out of time but just Martin Brehney and I like the way the Indo does this a tease up article to say can place the next day so Martin Brehney say, it's, it's a very interesting headline it's like why would you bring a neutral to watch a game of Gaelic football right so is this just an old man kind of shouting at clouds who's seen football for years and years and years from my neck of the woods and he's just got pissed off with the way the game has gone or do you look at those games even Mon and Armagh for me like if you really think that's a crap game I don't think you understand how good Gaelic football has become in another way mm. yeah well I put it to you this way I was in a cable car going from one side of Porto to another and there was an Iranian couple uh, in it with me and obviously I was watching the Monaghan Armagh game and it was at the end of the game and uh, it was that moment where Reen O'Neill and Manzi um, swapped those points and McGinney came on and, or maybe it was at the end it was a shoulder it was a Mohan nail turban yeah yeah and he leant over and he goes, my God, what are you watching? I was like, it's Gaelic football. I'll tell you one thing, he was Googling Gaelic football after he got off that cable car. He wanted to see what was going on after that. So look, at football isn't perfect. There isn't a hope in hell is perfect at the minute. But some teams showed us how it should be played at the weekend. There was nearly two different sports at the weekend. Like, would you not bring a neutral to watch David Clifford? Like, yeah, absolutely would. You know? And, and look, I, I think there's things that can be fixed about the game, but like, when GA Gold came on during the pandemic and we got to see all those old games like a lot of them were shite a lot of them were absolutely <laughs> you're nostalgic for it's like it's like horrific. the old boys who said communism was better it actually wasn't you can't have all good yeah. games though can't always be good games I think the, the game can improve but like physically athletically skill level they're as good as it's probably ever been 100% and, uh, couple of little tweaks needed but yeah I think the big debate here should have been around Dublin Tyrone uh, or sorry, sorry Dublin Kerry like the dubs were obviously absolutely frightening at the weekend but I just think the manner in which Kerry won the aggression they brought to their table the anger they played with mm. uh, just had, uh, kept them in the first place and I think it's if if Kerry can double down with that against Derry and it's going to be very difficult Derry are going to put in a really good performance if Kerry can double down and if Dublin can just about get by the clutch Kings Monaghan who don't forget have already relegated them last year um, and stayed up this year and have won so many games put so many games in the fire if Dublin can just get past Monaghan we could be set up for an absolute epic All-Ireland final Yeah. Um, but who knows maybe it's going to be a unique one and one of Monaghan and Derry are going to get there as well you never know you never know it's backroom teams as well Paddy Talley's influence on that Kerry team has probably helped keep them number one and, and also people wouldn't have, mightn't have known this before but that Monaghan circle of uh, players and backroom team on the pitch at Croke Park after the match some people have seen Porrick Duffy the former director general of the GEA who is um, I think it's logistics he's head of logistics he's certainly helping out uh, and he's been involved in Monaghan well, teams and stuff 
I'm not surprised, Shane, and I know you're on the payroll as well. So it's only about how many people are eligible to, to help Monaghan at this stage, like the size of the club, the amount of clubs, the size of the population. It is an unbelievable story, and it's they're they're one of my favourite teams, genuinely. Like they are unbelievable. Um, but they can't be hired in fifth at the moment. Absolutely. Maybe they win the All Ireland minor title, they'll jump in the fourth. Well possibly. Uh, yeah. can I give a mention to a bit of news we got coming up Go on later today? Yeah. The football pod have a roadshow coming up the Thursday night before the All Ireland final. <sighs> And it is going to be in the perfect venue. Crow Park. Oh. We're going to be in the Hogan Stand Suite the Thursday night before the All Ireland final. Uh, Paddy Andrews, James O'Donoghue, and special guests. It is going to be absolutely class. Tickets go on sale later today. They're going to be limited availability, so make sure you get a hold of them when you can. And, uh, and yeah. Brilliant stuff. That'll be a class one, Tommy. For the, for the podcast listeners at Cork, are down one to ninth. Tyrone down three to eighth. Galway staying seventh. Our man sixth. Monaghan up four to fifth place in the power rankings, uh, despite it being a four horse race. Mayo down one to fourth. Derry up one to third. And then, as Tommy said, Dublin second. And Kerry still the kingpins in first. Tommy, great stuff. Thanks, Shane. Thanks, Johnny. Brilliant stuff. Tommy Rooney's latest power rankings. Tommy knows his football obviously listening to football pod the odd time and I was looking at the power rankings and I thought that Jesus Owen must still be feeling the effects of these mushrooms